What's up everyone, it's Dakota and welcome back to another modern video and while there's some pretty new cards making an impact in the modern and pioneer format from the Outlaws of Thunder Junction set and of course the supposedly spin-off set that is now included in the set because they found out people didn't want expansions to their expansions in the big score sheet. So we're actually going to look at a deck that is not featuring Slickshot Show Off surprisingly as one of the main additions to the set but another card from the big score set maybe you do, maybe you've heard about it but we have this affinity deck here playing simulacrum synthesizer from the big score and basically building the deck kind of around that already using the core of the affinity game plan anyway to kind of get additional value from playing your spells and of course we're going to get it to here in just a minute but before we do of course if you're not a subscriber to the channel and you want to see more videos i post a lot of modern and pioneer content along with some other longer form videos i'm going to have a kind of review wrap up some of my thoughts and opinions of pro tour outlaws of thunder junction that actually took place this previous weekend as of the recording of this video so if you're interested in seeing that or any of my other content please consider subscribing and ring the notification bell so you know when those videos get posted we also have a podcast that goes up on Saturdays, it ends up being like most Saturdays, the Casual Spikes podcast where me, my co-host Randy, we talk about things going on in the modern pioneer format and some other things going on in general, kind of like in the magic community and kind of what's going on through Wizards and all that stuff and just kind of giving our general thoughts and opinions. So if you like even longer than, you know, the 20, 30, maybe the occasional 40 minute video I post there, there's some additional content there as well. So anyway, with all that out of the way, Affinity for Modern is a deck that has existed in different variations throughout the history of Modern. The older players will tell you that Affinity was just, you know, like Vault Scourges and Arcbound Ravagers, Mox Opals, and then you ended up kind of one-shotting your opponent thanks to things like Cranial Plating, where you just throw it onto a creature, makes it super big, and it's going to attack, and like if you equip it to Vault Scourge, something like that, you're going to end up gaining a ton of life and basically making it hard for your opponent to race. And typically, these Affinity decks have been, you know, a high win rate in Game 1, lower win rates in Game 2 and Game 3, just because there is a plethora of hate and some really good hate for artifacts and enchantments and it just kind of gets caught in the crossfire with those things uh, especially when it was one of the best decks in the format so many years ago or at least arguably one of the best decks in the format you always saw at least probably four to six maybe even seven uh, pieces of affinity hate in sideboards which made it very hard to win of course as we kind of went and moved on through modern's history and the banning of like mox opal the deck kind of got hit pretty hard by that, but still managed to exist in some ways. We saw some gimmicky builds where you would try to turn one of your seven drop creatures that you get to play for free, essentially, into a Crater Hoof Behemoth and just overrun your opponent that way, you know, just by getting to play a bunch of zeros and, you know, virtually uh, other big zero mana cost creatures. They're, your Crater Hoof is going to come to play and give them all like plus seven, plus seven and trample, and then you're going to attack and end up winning the game that way. This deck is not doing that, but rather doing. Something, uh, maybe not as cool, but it's definitely doing something pretty powerful. So we talked about this card, uh, Simulacrum Synthesizer, at least we brought it up in kind of the intro. So it's a two and a blue artifact that enters the battlefield, Scry 2. Already not very exciting. The Of course, the exciting part is kind of the bottom. You can use like the top part of this, the ATB, to you know manipulate your draw a little bit and maybe potentially find some kind of gas or action. So it's not like completely bad, but... Not what you're looking for, 3 mana Scry 2 in the modern format is uh, pretty brutal, honestly. So the bottom part says, whenever another artifact with mana value 3 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you create a 0, zero colorless construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus 1, plus 1 for each artifact you control. So essentially, it gets to make like the Urza Sagas tokens, aka like the Karn tokens, which you probably refer to them as Karn Struck tokens, and uh, this gets pretty nuts. So... For, like, the newer players that don't understand, you know, like, okay, well, we know that, you know, mana value three, you know, sometimes four, you have to have a really good four drops to kind of survive in the modern format. So how are we playing four mana artifacts and just not absolutely getting blown out of, you know, every game that we play? Well, there's this little neat mechanic, which derives from the name of the, or I guess the name of the deck derives from the mechanic, which is Affinity. So... 
Uh, Mirror Enforcer, Sojourner's Companion, Frogmite, and Thought Monitor all have this neat ability called Affinity for Artifacts. So if we look at uh, Mirror Enforcer, which I think is probably the biggest it is on any of the cards, Affinity for Artifacts just says that this spell costs one less to cast for each artifact you control. So you have essentially a full deck full of artifacts. So you even have like Darksteel Citadel, I believe, um, not from Ori Vault. Teal, uh, Tangle Bridge is an artifact land that is a battlefield tap and produces colored mana. Treasure Vault, artifact land. Urza Saga is an artifact land, but it does make card struck tokens, which can go to your artifact count. So with these guys, you know, Mirror Enforcer is just a 7 mana 4-4, four, four, but it has affinity. So a lot of times you can end up playing this for like one or two mana, you know, realistically like on turn two or turn three, which is still a pretty good rate. You know, one mana for a 4-4 four, four is pretty good in all honesty especially when you have another board full of just these uh random artifact creatures thought monitor is going to end up costing one blue for a 2-2 flyer pretty good and then enters battlefield draw two kind of keeps the engine going sojourner's companion can artifact land cycle so you can go find like a treasure vault if you need to a tangle bridge or a dark steel citadel if you're kind of light on lands and it, it still kind of counts towards your artifact count uh, obviously you'd rather have the four four because uh, it's going to trigger Simulacrum Synthesizer. But, you know, if you're if you're needing extra lands and stuff, you want to cast multiple spells, maybe you want to equip some things, which we'll go over here in a second, you can do that uh, with Sojourner's Companion. Frogmite is just a 4-mana 2-2. Two, two. Of course, uh, this one more realistically can be a 0-mana 2-2. Two, two. And then you have the Ornithopter and Memnite, we've all come to know and love. 0-mana 0-2 and a 0-mana 1-1. One, one. That is just going to get even better from some of the other equipment that we play in the deck. Uh, so going further, you know, these cards are going to trigger your uh, sim uh, Simulacrum Synthesizer and other Simulacrum Synthesizers are going to trigger each other along with Nettle Cyst, which is essentially kind of the uh, invert, like cranial plating, but it adds toughness and you get a body with it. So almost nothing like cranial plating. So this, uh, you can uh, equip creature or, you know, the creature gets a uh, plus one, plus one for each artifact and or enchantment you control. So this is like another way that you can like strap this to an ornithopter. And realistically, you have six, seven, eight artifacts to play. It ends up being an eight, 10 or a seven, nine, what have you. And, you know, that's a real clock in the air, especially since you're going to be able to attack through, you know, the Scion of Dracos and their ley lines and things like that. And it's just not very profitable for them. Even if they get two in play and you just have eight artifacts, you're still attacking with an eight, that is just going to eat up the double block from like the Dracos. Uh, of course, they're going to be able to race as well. Uh, that's why we have some other equipments in the deck that kind of help out. But before we get there, you know, we have a Forging Anchor, which does its best lead the Stampede Impression, but just for artifacts. So you get to look at the top five cards of your library, uh, reveal any number of artifact cards from among them. You put them in your hand, put the rest on the bottom in a random order. This is going to kind of help you dig a little bit deeper for your uh, synthesizer. And some seven drops and potentially uh, thought monitors to kind of keep the cards rolling. We have Thought Cast, which is essentially the sorcery version of Thought Monitor. So we have eight ways that we can draw, you know, two cards for one mana to kind of keep this train going. So colored mana a little bit more important in these uh, affinity decks than you know, typically the older versions and maybe less so in some of the versions kind of like in between where we saw that kind of, you know, go and get Crater Hoof after sacking like one of my seven drops, things like that. Going further, of course, we are an Urza Saga deck, so we are able to get Memnite Ornithopter. You're not able to get the affinity for artifact creatures if you have uh, in this case from your enforcer like six or seven because their converted mana cost is still seven but you can go get cards like welding jar that you can regenerate target artifact it allows you to kind of protect your simulacrum synthesizer and obviously protect any of your other creatures aether spell bomb is going to be a way that you can kind of clear the way you can bounce some creatures you can even bounce one of your own like sojourners like a thought monitor would be pretty good you end up bouncing this you cast it you get to you know hopefully make one or two construct tokens depending on how many simulacrum synthesizers you have and then draw two cards as well so it's some pretty good value and can just draw a card if you need it to Lava Spur Boots is another new addition to the deck where you can give a creature, you know, haste, award one, and plus one, plus O oh, with the equip of cost of one. So you can just end up playing like a Mirror Enforcer and then it immediately just becomes a threat. Sojourner's Companion, same thing. Thought Monitor as well. A 3 2 Flyer in the air is pretty good for a long time in Magic. A three power Flyer that you can play for cheap has always been pretty playable and it kind of ends up making Thought Monitor just that much better considering that the difference between two power and three power in terms of getting your opponent uh, dead and getting the game over is pretty significant. 
Uh, going further, Shadow Spear, which is kind of like the typical, you know, one mana spell that you would get, or I guess one mana equipment, excuse me, that you would get from Urza Saga if you're not specifically the Hammer Time deck. So giving your creature plus one, plus one, lifelink and trample is a way that you're going to immediately slam the door on your opponent. You make tons of artifacts once you get a synthesizer going. It's it's very easy to see, you know, 13, 13, 14, 14, 15, 15 these of uh, these like construct tokens so you're able to equip a shadow spear to it of course it's going to be plus one plus one bigger and you're going to be able to absolutely just trample and lifelink all of your opponent and you can make your opponent's permanent lose hex proof and indestructible until end of turn so that kind of helps you get around the scion like combo and things like that to be able to target your opponent's things so you can end up activating spring leaf drum and using aether spell bomb to bounce whatever creature their owner's hand Getting rid of the Scion, kind of blow them out in combat. They're expecting the first strike to matter, and then they end up either trading or worse, their creatures get eaten by some of your threats and things like that. It's an on-board trick, but I, I feel like people kind of forget that part of Shadow Spear as well, that you can activate it to make your uh, permanent your opponent control lose Hexproof and Indestructible. But nonetheless, it's there. It's something that can come up, so it's something to kind of think about from time to time. Uh, we have Springleaf Drum is like another way to generate additional mana, get our artifact count a little bit higher. Provides us that colored mana that we want to be able to cast Thought Monitors and Forging the Anchor, Thought Cast, and Simulacrum Synthesizer. And of course, this Lonely Pick Your Poison in the sideboard as well. The Renetosis that we went over, just another way to make, you know, like Ornithopter especially, very big. Thought Monitor the same, just putting this on a flyer and getting to attack. Or putting this on a creature that's equipped with like a Shadow Spear of course, uh, ideally being a construct token, then you're just going to end up dealing tons of damage, more than likely killing your opponent. If not, you're going to gain a ton of life. Put them on the back foot. They're ne probably never going to be able to be the aggro deck unless they have some sort of uh, like widespread, you know, like a board wipe or something like that, which I believe most modern decks are not playing at this current time. So you're just going to kind of get to run wild in game one. Uh, Urza Saga, you know, also just a card that we're going to keep referring to just because it's going to be able to get a lot of these artifacts plus make additional construct tokens, which are going to make your other construct tokens bigger and kind of like help the game get out of hand. You essentially have like eight ways to make giant creatures with one of them being uh, particularly good. I mean, I guess both of them being great, honestly, where one is actually going to get you a way to trample over your opponent's threats, while the other one is just going to give you continued value as long as you're able to kind of like chain thought monitors, thought cast, and cast these mirror enforcers, Sojourner's Companions, and Frog Mites. Uh, going to the sideboard, you have Tormod's Crypt, Graft Digger's Cage, you have Pithing Needle, Relic of Progenitus. These are cards that you're going to be able to, and Haywire, right? You're going to be able to get these off of Urza Saga. They're not going to trigger your sim, uh, Simulacrum Synthesizer, but these are just really good tools to have against, you know, some of the Graveyard decks and Tormod's Crypt and Grafdigger's Cage. Haywire Might is just kind of a nice, like, answer to non-creature and non-artifact enchantments. Pithing Needle to name, essentially, whatever card you're looking for. You, you can name Besaidu with this and stop your opponent from being able to channel Besaidu. Uh, Relic of Progenitus, again, just like some more Graveyard Hate, can end up drawing you a card in a pinch. Three Curse Totem, this is going to be coming for, like, those decks where... Creature abilities matter, you know, something namely like Yawgmoth. Metallic Rebuke is just the counter spell of choice, where it's essentially a one mana counter target spell unless your controller pays three. You have some artifacts that you don't necessarily care about tapping, like Synthesizer still works if it's tapped. You know, these random equipments like Shadow Spear, Springleaf Drum, Nettle Sis, you're able to like tap these for mana. Or rather, to pay some of the costs for the Metallic Rebuke and things like that. So, that is the Affinity deck for Modern. And uh, I remember I made a video, I believe last year or two years ago, about how Affinity doesn't really see play. And how, like, some lists have kind of shown up with, like, the Crater Hoof shenanigans and that. But I actually think that this is a pretty good build of Affinity and just kind of, like, a good engine and a very good like thing to kind of build around you know i i don't know if affinity needs to be a deck in the modern format but it definitely is a beloved archetype and hated by some you know beloved by a lot of people though since really mox opal getting banned and you know some bad kind of memories from older players playing the playing the deck whether you played it when it was in standard you know during the dark steel days or if you played it like in the early modern you know somewhere between you know people playing you know their combo their creature combo wins in like birthing pod or in the splinter twin deck so this is pretty neat uh, i like this build of affinity i would you know i i would definitely want to play it I, there's like a crazy match on like the moto masters that goes on, like, I believe, like, Anurag Das's channel on uh, YouTube. I think also on, like, the MTG 
O YouTube channel as well, where Saffron Olive and uh, I can't remember the other player, but they both played Silmiakum synth- uh, Synthesizer one week, and uh, there was just a huge constructs, and like the, the board state was just super, super clogged up, and some really interesting plays and things like that, so definitely if you want to see this deck in action, I would check that out, because uh, it was a very entertaining match to watch, and uh, yeah, that's going to do me this video. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like on the video. Comment down below what modern deck you would like to see next, and of course, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you know when future videos get posted it's a free easy way to support my content as well as checking out the casual spikes podcast that goes up on most saturdays as well that's gonna do for me in this video hope you all enjoyed and i hope to see you all in the next one